Hello and welcome to the Sky Dog Podcast, Horse Love, where I'm going to be talking with a whole variety of people about their love of horses. Come join us. Take me where your river flows. I want to drive on your open road like the wilderness where we are born singing woe. And today we have such exciting guests on my podcast, which I am really excited about because every time I see you guys appear or I drive up here and I see your cars, it makes me so happy. So I'm, do you want to just introduce yourselves one by one? And <laughs> Ian, Sarah and Jen are three of the most amazing volunteers that we have at Skydog Malibu. So each of you say your names and a little bit about, I'll tell you what you should start off talking about is how I love your story, Ian, of how you found Sky Dog and then ended up coming here. So let's just start with that. Okay. Um, yeah. I am Ian. Um, <laughs> I, um, I, I was, I was a huge fan of yours and what you've been doing um, for all the residents at Sky Dog for years and crying over the reunion stories. And um, I had been sort of vicariously um, uh, spending, you know, wishing that I could, you know, spend time at Sky Dog, but I just thought, oh, you must be inundated with, you know, uh, volunteers and people harassing you to come to the ranch all the time. And and you are, but <laughs> but I just, <laughs> but I didn't think that I would ever be, I, I really have dreamed, I had dreams in the night of being able to come to Sky Dog. And um, I dragged Sarah into your Instagram. I was like, you have to see. And so we became obsessed and we're, we're partners. And then we dragged uh, Jen into that, but um, just into that obsession. But I um, happen to be wearing this hat. Whenever I've had a birthday, I've always asked for Sky Dog swag. And um, I got this uh, a hat, I think, from you. Yeah. And I was up in Topanga Canyon. We were visiting friends of ours' horses, and we were down in the in the little village of Topanga Canyon. And I walked into a store there, and I had this hat on. And this woman said, "Oh my God, Sky Dog! I'm a volunteer there." And I was like, "Oh, oh my God, you're." <laughs> and so it was Shelly. And so I had to clasp my pearls and catch my breath. And she, uh, I said, I would love to volunteer there, but I'm sure that, you know, you guys have enough volunteers. She said, well, the volunteer thing was kind of closed down and COVID and all that stuff, but you should write to Claire. So I wrote you this message and said, look, mm -hmm. I have minuscule horse experience, but I'm obsessed with what you do. And, and we'd, we'd love to volunteer if you'd be interested. And you said, come up. And we sat down in your house and you showed us around the ranch and introduced us to everybody. And the rest is history. We just fell in love with the, you and the ranch and just everybody there. And we just, it, it's something that we look forward to. We do a at this point, we're there like a couple times a week. <laughs> yeah. So we're super as obsessed. Much as as possible. As much so possible. we drag Jen and <clears throat> Just, and we drag everybody that we can into a, a visit there, friends, family, whoever's here, we have to bring them there. So to them to understand on a small scale, because, uh, you know, Sky Dog Malibu is kind of like the senior assisted living um, <laughs> retirement for Sky Dog. And so we always like make sure that we under we help people understand that what you do in Oregon is like a different, you know, ball of wax and that, um, but that it's the same mission, but um, different climate and different kind of, you know, care. So anyway, that's, we just are obsessed with you and love you and so grateful that you let us be of service. I absolutely love that. I love hearing that story. And Shelly had been a volunteer and we did, we kind of shut down the volunteer program um, for quite a long while in Malibu, just partly to do with COVID and partly to do, we had a couple of negative experiences and I just thought, you know, this isn't worth it because this is my sanctuary too, you know, and I sort of had become a little mistrustful and defensive. And I am really grateful to you guys for kind of persuading me to open that door back up. And then you, Ian, have done an amazing job. You kind of took on the responsibility of really overseeing the whole volunteer program so that when people write to us, we send them to you and then you guys meet them and spend a little time with them. And, and in a way kind of, you know, 
filter out anything that maybe is not going to be harmonious to the animals and the ranch and me. And because this is also my home, you know, so it's, it's really amazing to have you guys. And I think it, it restored my faith back in humanity and people doing it for the right reasons. And, you know, also I kind of feel very much like the horses and donkeys here, they're not mine. And I want to share them with people that love them and want to be of service and care for them. And that, you know, that is a way that people can give back and and be a part of Sky Dog. And some amazing people have come since you guys have been coming. And it's just been, but also Sarah or Jen, well, Ian, any one of you tell me about, because this was not your first experience with Mustangs and you have your own little Mustang gang in Topanga with a group (laughs) of people and and Mustangs and you're kind of involved with them as well before you came here. No, you go for it. Um, so uh, our friend Ray Abruzzo, who is uh, also an actor, um, he is best friends with Wendy Malik. And we he um, and Wendy is very much like you, but on a very much smaller scale, and really wants people to love on her horses and her sweet little donkey Luca. And um, who she just is inc- just an incredibly open, kind, like please, you know, welcome to my you know, home. And, and so Ray is excellent friends with her and has been for forever and ever, and they've worked on projects. And so she trusts him and she also um, has entrusted him to take care of her horses when, uh, and he lives up in Topanga. And so when I first met him, he said, um, I I had a podcast and he, and he said, you know, uh, come up. I I wanted to have him on the podcast. So I said, I want to interview with you with the horses. I know it sounds kind of silly, but one of the things he said when I got up there was when I'm here, I forget my phone. I don't look for calls from my agents or my manager. He's like, everything else disappears. And like, I am a different person here. Like I forget about all that. Nothing else matters. And one of the things that we noticed immediately by going there. So after that time, after I interviewed him there, he kept inviting us up. We'd have brunch in Topanga and then we'd go up and see the boys. And like, it was happening almost every weekend. And we just became like cracked out (laughs) on (laughs) this experience. And so we would go up there for three hours, just grooming horses, like three people on one Mustang, you know? (laughs) And anyway, so um she has uh she has three mustangs and um and one uh mini burro and um so that was our intro be you know our sort of like our prep to be coming to you and turns out you already knew ray that was the other thing is that when i emailed you i was like oh i'm gonna name drop ray here because you guys had a connection so hopefully that will maybe help you feel a little bit safe about who we are. Mm-hmm. So anyway, um, that was our first sort of foray into uh, meeting Mustangs and and learning a little bit about them. And since then, we've learned so, so, so much. Yeah, Ray was an amazing. He came to the ranch a couple of times when we were over on the other canyon. And um, he he was so generous when we were making the safe act video he did a little thing you know saying pass the safe act but he got wendy to do it and a whole bunch of other actors and actresses and he was just amazing like how kind he was and how wonderful with the horses he was and it's it's funny how like it's like six degrees of separation you know all these different people that kind of have come together brought together by the mustangs and by the horses and by a common love of them and the compassion and I see you guys out there all the time, like grooming, you know, it, it actually has completely transformed a lot of the horses and donkeys here because you were here like Blackjack didn't want to be touched when you first came and neither did Boots, you know, both of them were completely like, I want nothing to do with people. And they are really transformed now. And it, you know, even Barnaby and Bella are kind of standoffish, but lately they've been a lot more friendly. And I think, these two yep. really um, have spent a lot of time with, you know, it, when you make a remark of like, we, you know, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm noticing that there might be a little backsliding of yep. in socialization on on one of these, any one of these residents, these beautiful 
Um, I would just want to call them people, but anyway. <laughs> they are and, people. They're just horses and people. Yeah, these we're two. like on it. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so we, we, we spend extra time. time. Yeah. yeah. Why don't you guys talk a little bit about that? Because and the things that you've, because that's, these two have something magical about them when they're yeah, spent. I about. agree. I don't have the magic that these do. These two oh, do. Oh, come on. Yeah, Ian does. <laughs> so. Let him fool you. We all do, which is great. That's why we have such yeah. passion. Yeah. So. No, what just, would you, what would you, them. sorry, what would you say is kind of like, have you felt that transformation in them and a change? And like, what did that feel like for you when you kind of had that breakthrough and suddenly you could love on Blackjack? And I mean, Boots is a completely different little mini mule than he was. So I love to hear your experience and how that feels for you actually. Yeah, like, doing it. In my life, it's actually one of the most satisfying things that I have. Like I find such a passion uh, coming up to Sky Dog, but with Bella and Boots or Blackjack, being able to take like a couple minutes or a few minutes and having that time with them and they've settled down, like just in that moment, like Ian was saying with, there's no phones, <clears throat> you're just so present to be so present with the animal and really feel that they've put their guard down and feel safe yeah. and vulnerable. There's actually no feeling like it that you can really experience. So I'm just so grateful I get to have that opportunity and take the time with them. So I don't know if Sarah has similar Experience. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, I mean, I think Marley is one of the ones that we really yeah. saw. Oh, <laughs> we saw the transformation. Yeah. We were there on his first day and, and his last day, you know, but in the in-between, we saw him go from like not even being able to look at us to being yeah. just a blank to, you know, just trotting over to us and we would come there and just being like <laughs> having that funny, like little excitement in his face to see us and spending a ton of time just loving on him, you know? And I think it is extraordinary because a lot of the horses and donkeys here, you know, you can tell when they come here that they've been abused and the donkeys kind of tuck their butts when you come up behind them because they really think they're just going to get hit. And just seeing those walls come down and Molly being an old Amish workhorse, I don't think he'd ever had any love in his whole life and didn't really know what it was or how to receive it. And then just as you say, like he would always turn away and then walk away. You know, it was almost like he just associated humans with like work or pain, you know, and then for him to have that last year of his life here where he was transformed really by love and kindness and, caring and he learned you know that a hand is gentle and you know for him to open up his heart like that in, in the last year of his life I think I think it was so beautiful for me to watch that and I'm so grateful to you guys because you know I wish I had if I had all the time in the world I would be out there all the time too and I would spend time with the horses and soak up their energy. And I make time in the day to go out there, but I have, you know, you know what my life looks like. And it's so, it's just like the most wonderful thing to know there are people out there, you know, like restoring faith in these animals after, you know, a lifetime of abuse or mistreatment or starvation. And, and um, yeah, so it, it, it's a huge I have so much gratitude for you guys. And I don't know, Jen, are you okay talking about what you do in your real life when you're not here? No, that's fine. No, I've been a I've been a police officer for gosh, almost well, 29 years, 30 years really, if you count three what police departments that I'm on. So, but I'm coming up on 27 years with the police department I'm at. So as you can imagine, I think most of us should do something for so long. Um, you start to get ready. I can't wait. Uh, looking forward to retirement and finding new passion in my life. So Sky Dogs Real uh, has rejuvenated some passion in me. Uh, I'm so grateful for the opportunity of being a police officer and helping so many people and being out there. It's interesting. Now I almost feel like, okay, I'm a little fatigued with helping people. So it's been so uh, rewarding emotionally to be able to help the animals. So it's been nice to kind of transform into that segment of my life as I'm kind of wrapping up the policing and I get to go, you know, help some animals now and not just police, uh, I'm sorry, people. So that's been really, I can't tell you how excited and just a renewed uh, passion and love that I have. And I love, as Ian was saying, anybody I meet, my friends, I'm always passing the information along, uh, follow Sky Dog, come volunteer at Sky Dog. Um, so I've definitely helped get some of my people involved also. 
Sorry, yeah. I was desperately trying to get the oh, yeah. sun <laughs> came up. It was like blaring yeah. in my it's face and making me look. So anyway, I've shut the curtain a little bit. You guys are so interesting in that way. You know, Jen doing what she does in her real life. And Ian, you can talk about what you do. And Sarah too. It's like the the full gamut of kind of such interesting places that you come from. And then you're kind of united in your love of the horses and come here. And I think it's like the same for me. I mean, it was one of the reasons I started doing this. You know, I'd kind of like burned out doing the other things I was doing and this just helped heal me, you know, and, and yes, make me I feel stop, that. slow down. And I loved what you said a moment ago when you the were restoring these, these animals. And I, and I, it's, you know um, it's not just the animals that are it, the restoration is, is everybody's thing. When you come here, it's like, no matter, like, you know, uh, I, I do, um, I'm a comic and an actor, but I also do carpentry and I started heavily doing carpentry in during the pandemic and, um, you know, restoration of just even, you know, my hands need a rest <laughs> when I have arthritis and coming to the ranch and like being able to just lay my hands on Harry and, yeah. you know, <laughs> who will always allow you to put your hands <laughs> on him because he's Harry, um, you know, so I, I don't know. I just think that, you know, that's one of those places. I also just want to add that Jen is an integral or, or an integral part of uh, of the process of getting to know volunteers. Um, <laughs> interrogator. <laughs> she's, an, she's really a good, like, get to know you um, interrogator. So we love to, we love the value of what Jen brings to um, when we meet new potential volunteers she gets so. a whiff of the weird really yeah I love it. yeah whiff of the weird oh yeah, my god it's so weird. funny anyone anyone now that's ever been to the ranch now is going to be wondering that we're talking I know. About- <laughs> if, <laughs> yeah, if, they, if they had that whiff yeah yeah yeah, yeah it's too funny and yeah. sarah you recently combined what you do in real life and brought it to sky dog yeah yeah my um Regular life is I'm a talent manager and one of my main gigs or my main gig is working with comedian Margaret Cho. So, and she's an animal lover. We yeah. all are. I mean, we've all, you know, worked together with her for years and Ian used to open for her and. Um, we're all just good friends. Yeah, yeah. And we just, we are total animal lovers. I mean, but we've been talking about like our dog love and, you know, animal love for years. So we even have Margaret and I started a production company together and it's called Animal Family. So we really are passionate about all animals. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's too. funny. Recently, I had to, strange. I had to put together an LLC, and the guy was like, "Can you choose a name? Because you have to kind of, you know, put it under something." And I called it Barkley Boy LLC, and it, oh. it meant when I see it come up on these legal documents, you know, it really means a lot to me. So it's funny oh, that you would say that. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, so I, we brought Margaret up to the ranch, and yeah. uh, she it was it was just like a the most beautiful day. It was, it and was. our friend Missy Pyle, who's yeah. also an actor, joined. So it was like mm-hmm. it was like um, you know I know that you uh, clearly you also know lots of people and on the board and and otherwise friends that are sort of you know ge- generously using their celebrity to spread the word about Sky Dog and Mustangs and the Safe Act, and so. Yeah. We were grateful that not only that Margaret loves animals, but that was like, yeah, I'd love to go up to the ranch and Missy as well. So we were excited to bring them. Yeah, that and, and that is so true. You know, it was something that kind of happened a little bit at the beginning because I had some friends in the business that came up and now it's just, it really is extraordinary, you know, how much difference it makes for some of these people to use their platform and kind of, you know, recently um, the experience I have with Zach Braff, because he came up with a friend of mine, Krista Miller, and he just became utterly obsessed. You know, he kind of four hour deep dive into our social media. And then he was like, you got to come on my podcast. And then he came up with Krista and Charlotte, Krista's daughter to uh, the Oregon ranch. And it's extraordinary, like just him telling people to follow us and and posting about us and all three of them. It does, you know, and and to bring people in from different walks of life, like you did, Sarah, and kind of just that ripple effect that more people are finding out about the plight of the American Mustang and Sky Dog and the Safe Act. And I think it's been something that just 
it kind of happened accidentally, but it has become a huge part of what we do. And I think it really is making a difference, you know, to make this subject relevant and talked about and more and more people are finding out. And that's an amazing thing. So I wanted to ask you, this is such a terrible question to ask you, but do any of you guys have a favorite horse or donkey <laughs> or mini mule at Sky Dog um, that you particularly like can't wait to see when you come here? Or is it all the same? Or do you have your own favorites? Okay, uh, there, there's more than one no, for sure. It would take so long because yeah. there's something that I love about each one yeah. of them yeah. that it, you know, it would take so long. But I think, you know, of, I, I, no, I don't have a favorite because every day, every time we come, like something else happens that makes me love somebody mm -hmm. else even more. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. But I'm so, you know what? I gotta, I gotta say that I am madly in love with both Apache and Cisco mm -hmm. being here. Yes. Uh, awesome. They've yes. added you know, uh, a new energy to that, the corral where Harry Chesney and Boots are that, that um, is like lively and a little bit youthful and, you know, is fun and playful and uh, watching Boots play with Apache. And um, so, uh, but we're still getting to know them. So, but um, we are always, always excited when a new, a newbie comes to yeah. so It's like, Ooh, <laughs> yeah. You know, and, I have to say, and you didn't mention, but one of my little favorites lately is Duke the pig. I don't know. Okay. Duke, Duke kind of responds to my so voice. So cute. I just, Duke loves her. I do like to run and go see Duke. And when I kind of raise my voice, Duke runs over. So there's something very endearing about that. But as Ian mentioned, every day you have a little bit different experience with maybe one of the, the horses or donkeys and, and depending on Boots's uh big personality or maybe Vinny and Red are just softer and gentler that day. So I kind of lean into each one. Uh, so it's hard with the favorite, but I do enjoy Cisco and Apache really do add a lot of spunk to everybody's personality. So we're really enjoying that, just watching them and engaging. I love, I love the um, finickiness of Remy and Dream. Like, yeah. I just, like some days, like Remy just wants me to rub all over her and she's just like <laughs> almost asleep and she loves it. And then some days she's like, no, but yeah. and dream too. And sometimes dream, like if I'm, you know, scratching on Remy, dream will come and stand so close. We'll be right there. But she's like, don't touch me, but I want to stand really close. And yeah. it's so cute. I love it. I, yeah. I, I tend to lean towards the ones that are challenging. Yeah. yeah that need more time and force me to go slower. Yeah. And I'm, I'm like, I'm down for the, uh, for the underdog and for the one who needs, you know, more, more care. Yeah. Um, but I, and then on the other side, like, I also love the big personality of someone like Harry yeah. or Boots, or I love the romanticness of Vinny and Red and Charlie Brown. Yeah, and then so I also many. love the challenge of Blackjack and, but Mama and, you know, Flopsy and Foo, like, yeah. we're just going to name them all. Yeah, but no, also like Bella and Bella and Barnaby, like, yeah, they, just, they just, you know, Barnaby's just nice to work on. Barnaby's being a little ornery, but Bella really was loving the other day when I was there. And I really enjoyed because she's not always wanting that attention so to just like Ema said to be gentle and softer it slows me down yeah and to have animals that are a little more resistant to that has been good for me internally challenging me to slow down and really take a moment so I've I've, I've really enjoyed that kind of challenge and yeah you know, that is so that. true that that that's what I get out of it that kind of you're forced to slow down and take it slow and bring your energy down and kind of you know, you, you've got to come to Barnaby and Bella, for example, you know, they're, they're not Graham. <laughs> no one said Graham Cracker. And I was just thinking like, Graham <laughs> oh, I got Graham. Graham Cracker is like, I'll take it all. I'll take it all. <laughs> He'll take it all. I mean, he is so, I don't understand. He has no boundaries, no spatial awareness, wants to be completely on top of you. Yeah. And yeah. He's, he's just he's, a kind of bit of a weird at the ranch. He's the tallest. Yeah. Yeah, he's the tallest at the ranch, but he's he's a bit like Lurch from the Adams family. He oh, sort yeah. of kind of yeah. lurches around and comes right in your face. He's and, right behind you. Yeah, yeah. 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 on top of you, Claire. Yeah. Yep. But they've got such 
such characters and personalities, you know, it's like, and it's really nice for me to have this conversation with you guys, because, you know, a lot of people know the horses in Oregon very well, and they know their stories. And a lot of the people, a lot of the horses, there you go, they are people, a lot of the horses at Malibu, they've been here a long time. So people maybe didn't know Remy's story or Dream's story or Chesney or Harry. And so, you know, it's not like people ask for them as much, but I think it's, so lovely for people to hear them talked about like this and get to know their personalities a little bit. Like they know Boots and Boots and Stanley came in and that was a a whole thing. And, you know, and the other thing, you know, you touched on it earlier with Molly that you were here for his first day and you were here for his last day. And, you know, we've had a couple of experiences here with you guys here that has been the last final moments with a horse and Swayze and Molly both in you know, I don't, I don't know why death comes up as a subject on this podcast, but it's like something that I've talked about with other people about what was, you know, your best day and what was your worst, saddest memory in a way. And, and it's been different horses that have passed away. And that is something, you know, it's very much a part of rescue, you know, and, and you can't shy away from it, you know, and it's taken me a while to kind of come to terms because each death is different and, you know, losing each horse leaves a different shaped hole in my heart, you know, and it, and it's hard. And those, those days when we lose them stick with me, but, you know, that was obviously a traumatic experience that we all went through together with Swayze and then um, Molly passing away. But I think it's in a way, it's a muscle that you need to kind of like um, build up in rescue, you know, to, to understand that that happens and understand that those goodbyes come and, you know, it sort of makes you stronger for that, you know, cause at the beginning it's like shocking, you know, that that's something you might have to go through, but I don't know if that gave you any insights or kind of made you feel a little differently about the ones that we have here. Cause we often have the cases here that are much, much older that have come here for their final months, weeks, years, you know, so that happens here. And I don't know if you've had any insights about that and how that changed the way that you look at the horses, you know, not being here forever and not taking that for granted, I guess. I I mean, I definitely try to appreciate like every minute with them. Even the other day when you texted us and said dreams having a hard time, like, oh, I just felt, I mean, it felt awful. I want her to be fine, but I felt like, oh, I'm so glad we spent a bunch of time with her the other day. Like, yeah. Every time we're there with every single one of them, we just want to like just make the best of every minute and, and make I, them feel yeah. good. You know? I haven't because of a dream that I popped up during the week, which I don't usually do in the afternoon. I was heading out with my dog, but I wanted to just see dream. And it made me think that's why with Bella, I even took a little extra time with Bella. I don't know why I was feeling drawn to her. Uh I was I loved Marley and I was so sad I wasn't mm-hmm. there the day or or not, right? We it play life plays out, death and life plays out. Yeah, my mother was supposed to be there, so I wasn't there the day that Marley passed. But it has even given me more the times I'm up there to just really take that. You know, we're speeding in our heads, or we're busy to really take time and slow down, slow down with each animal. So it has affected me profoundly with Marley and then Swayze. Also, we had that experience. We yeah. do all our mucking and all the all the work, and then we go around to every single one. <laughs> And visit everybody. So yeah. we, just hate to, we hate to miss a minute with any of them, you know? No, it's so true. I had that. There was a mule up in Oregon called Petula. And it was really weird that I went out one evening and she came to me and we spent so much time. She's She'd been with us for years and was in her thirties. And I spent so much time loving on her and took some video of her and the next day we were actually driving out to the BLM and I looked to my left and it was weird when I woke up that morning, all the horses were acting a little strange in that herd. They were all standing facing the same direction and they're usually not there in the morning. And um, they had stayed with her all night. And as I looked to the left, I saw her body and she had just passed away in the night. But I, that was my first thought too. Like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I went out and gave her all that love, you know? And it wasn't that I knew or I thought there was anything wrong with her because she was completely fine the night before. But there was some comfort in thinking, you know, she just lay down in a field of flowers and went to sleep. And after everything she went through in her life, what better way to go? And and same with Stanley, you know, he he dropped dead playing with boots, you know, which 
when I think about it, it's like, what a way to go. Perfect. What a way. It was like perfect, you know, it, and the vet actually said, if I was a horse, that's how I would want to go. There wasn't even a sign of struggle in the sand. It was like just dropped, dropped and left, you know, and passed on to the next life. And it was something really peaceful about that. So, yeah. And I really appreciate you guys being here for that. You know, you were asking about the best days and the hardest days, you know, with this kind of work. And for us, for me, um, you know, I would say those la that last day for Marley and even for Swayze, as difficult as this, you know, physically difficult as it was for the Swayze morning, I, I am so grateful for that experience. I actually, and I know this sounds weird, but like I prefer um, experiences that evoke more from me. Yeah. Rather than, you know, that are like more, you know, more challenging and more emotional and, you know, and so I, I, it's not that I thrive on that. It's like, I'm not into drama, but like, I appreciate what that makes me feel. Yeah. And, you know, I just, and, and I feel, I feel like when we pulled in that morning for Swayze, like we are supposed to be here. Yeah. We are supposed to be here yeah. and supposed to be helping out. This was like our third day, I yeah. think, yeah. <laughs> third time up there. And to arrive into what was happening, um, I, you know, it just felt like we, I, I don't know, it just felt like, oh, we're exactly supposed to, this is exactly yeah. where we're su supposed to be. And so to be of service and, you know, um, you, I remember you talking about, you know, and you, I know you're very open about being in recovery. I'm in recovery. And you said, this is how I want to be of service. Yeah. Um, and that we can all be of service, but this is how I'm doing it. And, you know, I feel like this is part of how I'm being of service now too. Clearly I'm in no place like where you're at, but like, I definitely feel like that this is like, this had spoke to me so loudly and um, yeah, so, and the last thing I want to say is about going around and visiting all of the horses is uh, is that each one, you said this the, my first day there, and I, I heard it so loud and clear. It's like, when you go up, when you have an exchange with a horse, it's a conversation. Mm. And, and I have just to remember to listen. I can't sort of walk over what they're telling me and do what I want to do. Yeah. Like it is... And every single one, it, they are different and they're going to talk to you about something different. They're going to want something different. Their needs are different. And so I always just try to remember like, oh, this is Boots. Like, mm -hmm. I know how Boots talks, you know, mm -hmm. this is Remy. I know how Remy talks, you know, mm -hmm. which is very little. Remy talks very little, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, but you have to pay attention to these little things that they're giving you. Um, and uh, I just, I, I value everything that I learned just even through osmosis of like not even being part of the conversation that you're having, but hearing it, yeah. like learning something um, every time that I'm there. So I'm so grateful. I, I think that's so beautifully said. And I wanted to say, um, so I've never actually talked about this, but I am wearing a bracelet, a <laughs> necklace, TCB, taking care of business. And Ian, Sarah and Jen all have one. And everybody knows my obsession for Elvis Presley and how many horses I've named for Elvis, including Tupelo Honey, who we just took. And um, so TCB was something that I just, especially like to do with the horses, you know, when I was going to the BLM or I was going to kill pen or an auction to get a horse, I was like, I would kind of put that on as a sort of it gave me strength somehow. I was like, I'm taking care of business, you know, for these horses. I got to get this done. I can't let my emotions get in the way. You know, we're going on this mission. We're going to pick up these horses and bring them home to safety. And then I went through a period in, in just kind of what you were talking about. Like I stopped trusting everyone and I sort of think everyone had their own agendas and was sort of trying to use Sky Dog for their own ends and, and had a couple of people, but I felt very betrayed. And I was like, right, that's it. I'm going to shut off from everyone. I'm not going to, you know, have close connections with people because they're too painful. And I thought these people were my friends and they weren't. And so when you kind of pulled me out of my shell again, I started wearing my TCB necklace. And then I thought, because Elvis actually did this, he had rings, I think, or necklaces as well, that he would give to his 
sort of inner circle, the guys that he really trusted and their girlfriends or wives. So I thought, well, I'm going to do this crazy thing. And these are like my crew. Like I can talk to them about anything, you know, when I'm having a bad day or a good day or, you know, feeling whatever way, you know, the amount of times you've come into my home and we've sat and talked about put the world to rights and you've reassured me or made me feel better. I cannot tell you, I'm so proud that you're in my TCB gang, as are many others. Janelle has one and a whole bunch of people have them, but they know if they're in the crew and it means a lot to me. And um, I love that you're all wearing the necklaces today. Uh, We always wear it. We totally. I'm so honored to be in the crew, but yeah. I haven't taken mine off. It's kind of grubby. I got to say, I got to clean it. And also mine is slightly different to yours. You guys have longer lightning bolts, which I'm very jealous of. My lightning bolt is kind of not oh, as as exciting as yours. I might have to try and find find your one. So we're all in this. That's though. You've said it to us. Even like, I mean, on the hard Marley day when we were all trying to like figure out what was going on, you were just like taking care of business. And we were yeah. all like, yeah, we're taking care of business. Care and it does business. help. Like it kind yeah. of like, it did pull us all in to be like, yeah, we're doing what we need to do for him, you know? Exactly. And um, yeah, it's true. Well, we only have two minutes left. I don't know if there's a question you wanted to ask me at the end of each podcast. If someone wanted to ask me a question, I could try and answer it in two minutes. Otherwise we could just end on our taking care of business connection. (laughs) I'm just taking care of business. I'm honored to be a part of it. And thank you so much, Claire, for allowing us in your life. We love love it. You guys like so much. We love Sky Dog and we love Claire. Thank you. All the Mustangs. We love you. Thank you so much. Thank Thank you, you, Ian. I really appreciate it. I'll see you soon, Jen. See you soon, Sarah and Ian. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. Love you. Bye.